So uh, you might be wondering why you should you use a new Java 8 streams? It's just you know, if you can do it the same way you've been doing things, uh, why do you need to learn this new notation? And the answer is, as it says here, is speed. Uh, with the new Java 8 streams, in some cases, you're going to get uh, speed up. Basically, you're going to be able to par automatically parallelize your code, your execution. So that's going to make your programs faster. And I want to demonstrate that right now. So what I have here, as you can see, is uh, I set up the variable data, which is an array list, and I populate that with 1 million random integers. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through each one of those million random integers. We're going to apply f to them. So I have this function f, which I created, which is just you know just some calculations. So this would be you know in your maybe you're calculating taxes or calculating you know the, the spline or doing some graphical thing with it or whatever your actual program is doing. I'm just doing some random math. Uh, so I'm gonna have to do that to all mi one million elements, and then I gotta add up all those one million numbers. Obviously, this is you know the integer is gonna overflow and whatever, but I don't care. Uh, so how do we do that? You know, it's pretty simple. The standard way of doing it, I just say int i in data, uh, and then uh, well, I'm gonna need my uh, res set up my result to be zero, and then result. Oops plus equal uh, f of i, and I'm done, print out result, result. So this is the traditional way of doing it. Uh, the tradition for each uh, iterator. Um, I'm gonna run that. Right. And uh, it's compiling it right now, and what it does, I'm going to show you. This is the uh, it shows you my four cores, right? So this machine, well, technically it has two cores, but because of hyperthreading, shows us up basically four core, or effectively. Uh, and then it shows you the load on each one of them as time goes on, and uh, you can see that you know. These two here are pretty dark. They're underused. There's almost nothing there. So a lot of black space here. Even here and here, there's a lot of black space. Uh, that means that you know the cores are not used all the time. Uh, if this is a program that you need to get done as fast as possible, you want to use all the cores all the time, 100%, right? Because you you want to get it done as fast as possible. But that's not happening. Um, right, and uh, it's basically you know kind of using uh, in, in just the one mostly. I notice that right now I'm recording, so there's the ScreenFlow app. The recording app is using up some one of these, so it'll be even lower uh, if I wasn't recording. Uh, so how do we fix that? Right, uh, I'm gonna have to stop this because obviously it's not gonna finish in time adding up all those numbers so i hit stop already but uh there you go it takes a little while to stop i'm gonna move this guy out of the way so i know what i'm doing and then we're gonna re-implement this using the new java 8 streams basically what we do there is i'm gonna get the stream and then i'm gonna do a map reduce so i'm gonna map i'm gonna apply the function f to every element and then I'm going to reduce the result using the sum operator, integer sum, right? Uh, two columns. And then I have to get the actual value because uh, the reduce operator actually doesn't return an integer, it returns this optional, which is basically either an integer or a null. Uh, so there it is. That's the result. And uh, I'm going to print out the result. And then I'm going to comment this out. So we can run this again. So now this, I mean, if you haven't seen Java 8 arrays, first of all, you notice that this whole thing, you know, kind of fits in a line, although technically it's a longer line than this. But um, after, you know, I guess at first this looks kind of weird. After a while, this will make 
sense more sense than this uh, we're looking at here the CPU consumption and uh, you see well it's not actually doing much better is it um, right? so it's basically roughly the same yes because that's because we haven't done any parallelism yet but I'm gonna stop that so we can oops stop um, so uh, you if you want to change this to be parallel it's really easy you just have to comment that out and replace basically all you do is replace the stream with parallel stream ah didn't know about that there you go so I run that and then I'm gonna move this little CPU history over here and uh, you see now it started so it stopped compiling is done so now it's actually running and uh, what do you see well it's all green all the processors all the time uh, so we're using all of our cores to the max right now uh, and that's what you want right so if you want it to go as fast as possible you want to use you want it to use all the processors as fast as possible uh, I'll be in all the time and uh, you see now it dropped because it's done the other one took a long time I didn't finish this guy done so speed it's awesome um, so that also all you need to do right? all you have to do is change this stream from stream to parallel stream and you might as well start using it uh, of course you know it's in parallel so depending on the stuff you're doing here within your f of f you, you gotta be careful uh, and uh, now it's also true that you know uh, you can also you could have used threads right uh, so you could have taken this code and used the old-fashioned threads and parallelize it but that is a lot more code for you right so you have to create all these threads you have to figure out how many threads you need you have to move this code to the run method in the threads or you know so you, maybe you have to move your code around which could be like really complicated in your program so it will be yeah it could be very messy whereas in the new way um, yeah you just have to change that one thing to this thing from stream to parallel stream and and you get it all and this is really important uh, in this decade because uh, you know we're looking at a multi-core future right so most people predict that this is the way things are going you know basically m machines have been stuck around 3 gigahertz uh, 3.0 gigahertz you know plus or minus whatever uh, so the clock speed hasn't been going up since around 2005 however cores have right so this machine I have is now four core um, and uh, basically this is my laptop and you know we expect things to double so six we'll see six eight cores are normal in a few years and 16 cores and 32 cores 64 cores and then 28 cores Maybe by the end of the decade or 256. Want to take a guess? I don't know, but uh, but that's going to be the trend. That that is the trend now. That's what everybody expects. So what this means for your code is, if your code is this code here, the old-fashioned code, uh, it does. It's not going to take advantage of this, right? It's still going to run in just the one core. Uh, and uh, so when I get my new 16 core machine, it's just going to be using one core and your program is going to be super slow. Whereas if this is the program, this program here, when I get my new machine with 32 cores, this program is going to be, you know, super fast. It's going to be take advantage of all those cores. So that's why uh, you, you know, this is going to be very important. Most people believe in the next decade.